So in this video, we'll continue on our examples looking at member compression capacity. Um, you know, previously we've looked at uh, the compression capacity of a UB, a universal uh, beam. Uh, in this one, we're going to look at something uh, slightly different. We're going to look at a circular hollow section, a uh, CHS. So uh, this is the, um, the example that we have. So we have sort of this uh, uh, circular column, so a CHS, which is a 219 by uh, 8.2 millimeter uh, wall thickness. So that's the, uh, the nominal diameter. Um, and it is, uh, it's got these two stories. The first story is coming in at four meters tall, uh, and the uh, second story is coming in uh, three meters above that. And then if we look at the sections here, we can see that at the roof, um, we've got elements framing in from both directions, uh, but we only have them framing in uh, from one direction um, here at the first floor. Um, it's saying that uh, all the steel is uh, grade 300 and we're supposed to use idealized boundary conditions um, and that the system is braced against side sway. Uh, also, there's another note that says that simple connections are used, so uh, the web splice uh, connections uh, are, are the only thing that's connecting here. So you can uh, essentially think of these connections as uh, nominally pinned in both directions. So um, the first thing that we want to do is... Um, because uh, if all we're doing is trying to determine, um, you know, what the maximum compression load is, uh, our first step is really going to be uh, make that look more like a 1 instead of a D, uh, which is not really the first step, but uh, it's the first step that I'm doing. Um, the first step is really going to be uh, determining uh, the section capacity. And that section capacity uh, is, again, just going to be phi uh, n sub s. And um, if you remember, you know, our section capacity is really a local buckling check. And so, and we do that by looking at um, uh, slenderness limits. And so, you know, for a... Uh, uh, for an I-style section, so UB or UC, we looked at the slenderness of the flanges and the slenderness of the uh, webs. But what do we do when, you know, the plate's bent around a circle? Well, uh, let's just go over to our, uh, uh, our steel standard, NZS3404. And we can see that for a, um, a circular section, we just take the outside diameter uh, and we multiply it, and that we look at the ratio of the outside diameter to the thickness of the member. And um, from there, uh, we uh, uh, then multiply that by the uh, Fy of the section um, over 250. So um, if we sort of uh, just move over here to our um, uh, sort of design tables, and you can see we this is called line pipe, uh, but you can see this is a, a CHS, a circular hollow section. Um, we So let's just zoom in on the uh, section which we are interested in. Uh, you can see I've highlighted it here. Uh, the outside diameter, uh, D of uh, O, uh, is just going to be 219.1, and the thickness is 8.2. And you can see from... <coughs> <coughs> And you can see from the uh, footnote here that uh, for the grade 350, uh, it's a 350 MPA uh, yield stress. Um, other thing to note, which will be important as we look at the uh, member capacity, is that uh, the grade 350 steel used is cold form, um, and so we've got a cold form residual stress classification. So in taking that, let's just go back to our... Um, um, uh, yeah, our sort of section capacity here, our section capacity calculation. And again, we were looking just from the standard, we had uh, lambda E uh, equals um, our outside diameter uh, divided by the thickness of the wall over Fy over 250. And um, the, the interesting thing to note here for, and again, this is just going to come out from NZS, uh, 3404, 
uh, section 6.2.3.2. Now, one uh, slight difference from uh, when we're looking at uh, plate sections is this FY over 250 uh, is not uh, taken to the power of the one half. There's no square root here. Uh, while you could see, yeah, there's no square root here. While you could see uh, the square root exists for when we're looking at flat plates. So that's just one difference that we need to uh, be cognizant of and, and watch out for. Um, so uh, going back to our uh, calculations, and if we plug in our uh, exterior uh, diameter, if uh, 219.1 uh, uh, millimeters over 8.2, millimeters, uh, and then we multiply that by uh, 350 over 250. Uh, what we end up, we'll just sort of uh, bring the old uh, calculator here. Uh, let's see if there's a place uh, well, we can maybe just see these calculations uh, outside of the um, uh, glare here divided by 8.2. Two uh, times three fifty divided by two fifty, uh, we get a. You can just see it there. Uh, lambda e equals thirty-seven point four. Well, the next thing that we need to um, compare to is that uh, see if this lambda e is going to be greater than or less than our slenderness limits in table 6.2.4. So uh, again, just coming back, if we look at our case, so for circular hollow sections, uh, for a cold formed um, section, which is what we have, so CF, uh, again, that was just coming uh, straight uh, out of the uh, uh, this footnote here that um, our grade 350 uh, uh, CHS is uh, cold formed. Um, well, then we have a slenderness limit, uh, lambda EY, of 82. So, um, lambda EY equals 82, and this is just coming from table 6.2.4. Um, and then we can see that you know, lambda E equal to 37.4 is less than the yield slenderness limit, lambda EY equal to 82. So no local buckling. That's good news. That means we can take the uh, take advantage of the full section. Um, also, you know, we've got no holes in the section, so that means that we have, um, you know, AE equals an equals our gross area and um, if we're working out you know again our section capacity phi ends of s is just going to be our uh, form factor k sub f uh, times a sub n um, times fy k sub f equals a e over a n uh, in this case it equals 1.0 because we have no local buckling, so uh, that's always nice. And then uh, AN equals to um, AG. Uh, again, if we just go back to our section tables and we look up what our gross area is, um, we'll find uh, our gross area is 5,430 millimeters squared uh, for this uh, CHS, the circular hollow section. And so um, that equals 5,430 millimeters squared. So phi ends of S is going to be 1.0. Uh, and we'll just we'll do phi, sorry. Uh, we'll put that phi factor in there, make sure we don't forget it. So our phi is 0 0.9. KF equals 1.0, AN equals AG equals 5,430, and FY equals 350 MPA. We'll divide by 1,000 just to get this into kilonewtons, and so we get phi 
ends of s equals 1,710 kilonewtons. So that's been that's fairly straightforward uh, to get through. Uh, the next thing we need to look at is going to be our uh, our member capacity. So we know the section can take uh, just over 1,700 kilonewtons. So uh, looking at our uh, member capacity, our alpha, uh, so phi ends of C is just alpha C, phi alpha C ends of S. So we know phi, we know ends of S, we've just determined it. Uh, so what we want to find is alpha C, and alpha C is dependent on uh, alpha B, uh, which equals our uh, residual stress pattern. Remember, we have a cold form section. And yeah, we, we know it's cold form just because the, uh, uh, the section property tables uh, uh, just alerted us that that was how it was manufactured. Um, and then the other thing that alpha B is dependent upon is this lambda N, our modified slenderness ratio, uh, which is just um, LE over R. our form factor, case of F, which is 1.0 in this case, and then Fy over 250. Um, so um, let, let's sort of break down, so the alpha B, this we're just pulling this out of a table, um, the lambda N, uh, it's this LE and this R that we need to look at. Well, we have a, um, we have a section uh, which is symmetric, and so if R is simply going to be the um, uh, the uh, square root, so you know if R equals the uh, square root of the moment of inertia over the area, well, for a symmetrical section, for a circular section, we only have one R. Um, and again, we can pull this straight out of the section capacity tables. Uh, we'll just go back to those. Um, and you can see that the value R equals 74.6. So uh, let's bring us back. Let's just write that down. So R equals 74.6. Uh, and this is just, we'll keep our reference here on the side. Uh, section. Property tables. So we know R is 74.6, and that's uh, in uh, millimeters there. Um, what we need to find out is this else of E. Well, you know, this, um, this column can buckle about two different directions. It can either buckle um, sort of about the, uh, the y-axis here, sort of, and it would have a buckled form, which looks, you know, because we have a restraint here. It's going to buckle between restraints, and it will either look like that, or it will buckle um, about the, the BB form, and it will um, have a, uh, a buckled shape, which is um, uh, essentially over the whole length there. So, uh, you know, if this is our, our element, um, and we will, uh, it can either buckle kind of like that. And again, sorry, the, the bottom here is fixed. It's, we'll see if we can, there you go. That gives you something of what the buckled shape looks like there. Or... Uh, about the uh, the x-axis, um, it's really just a fixed and pin, so it's a it's a much larger uh, effective length. So we'll erase that there just to keep us from being confused. So uh, yeah, what we need to find out is you know what is our uh, our effective length that we want to use, and um, in fact you know it's probably even worth. So you know it's going to be. It's this whole thing here, this uh, 7 meters is going to be our uh, longest effective length. So in determining uh, LE, it's just going to be case of E times L. Uh, L equals uh, 7,000 millimeters. And that's because we have... Um, 
symmetrical section. So take longest unbraced length. Cool. So that's that's all right. So now, well, let's just sort of work out what this case of E value is. And really, what we need to do is if we, uh, the section brief although that has told us to uh, assume we've got these idealized boundary conditions. Well, our idealized boundary conditions, if we're using simple connections at the top, and the top is effectively pinned, and we see that down here, well, we've got this, uh, this fixed column base. So um, we have uh, a a section that looks something like this, where, you know, this L equals 7 meters. And again, if we, uh, we put a, a compression load on it, we'll see a buckled shape, which will look something like that. So let's go um, back to the standard and see uh, what effective length factor case of E we should use. And if we do that, and we see that if we have a, uh, a fixed pin member, uh, we have a KE factor of 0 0.8. So that's what we'll do. We'll just write that down. So uh, KE equal 0. Point, sorry, not 0 0.8, 0 0.85. Uh, just come right back here. And that is uh, case 2. And so we'll go uh, case two uh, in figure four dot eight dot three dot two from ends at S three four zero oh, four. So case of E equals zero point eight five. So then our effective length equals zero point eight five times 7,000 millimeters, are, and that gives us an effective length of uh, 5,950 millimeters. All right, well, now that we have our effective length, we can work out our lambda. And remember, we're only doing this once because we have a symmetric section, and this is why we could just choose this uh, longest unbraced length of um, seven meters here. If we had a different um, radius of gyration uh, about the two uh, axes that we could buckle about, well then we would actually, we'd need to compute the slenderness ratio for both directions and then pick whichever one is the highest slenderness. Um, I mean, in this case, we know that, you know, if R stays the same, um, then, you know, it's just going to be the higher slenderness. It's just going to be whichever length is going to be longer. You know, really, we've got three to choose from. We either have uh, the 7 uh, times 0.85, so, you know, 5.95 meters, or we have this 3 meters uh, times uh, pin pin uh, times a KE of uh, 1.0. You know, if we just look at uh, this one here, um, or we have a, uh, a 4 meters times a KE of 0 0.85. So, you know, this is, uh, we got LE equal 4 times 0 0.85. Um, and this is uh, for bending about the uh, LEY, about the Y axis. Uh, LEY equals uh, 3 times 1.0 or uh, we've got the LEX equals uh, 7 times 0 0.85. So as you can see, we, we've got those three different ones. Uh, if we plug each of those uh, slenderness in, uh, we can see which one is going to be the one that governs. And this we're just taking sort of a shortcut because if R is the same uh, about each axis, uh, because I and A haven't changed, um, then, yeah, we can just uh, sort of shortcut and go to whichever one we see is going to have the uh, highest slenderness out of those. So, um, after that little detour, let's go back and let's calculate what this slenderness ratio is, this modified slenderness ratio is. So, uh, lambda n uh, equals 
5,950 um, over 74.6. And again, those are both in millimeters. Um, case of F, uh, we found out uh, previously, uh, is, um, you know, 1.0. So, case of F. Uh, instead of case of F, let's just put the 1.0 down. So we'll go 1.0. And it's a grade 350 uh, steel section, so we have 350 over 250 square root. And if we work all that out, we get a uh, lambda n equal to 94.4. That's our modified slenderness ratio. All right. Uh, well, we we have uh, you know part one of this. Uh, we now need to find out what this uh, alpha b is. Um, and the alpha B, all we do is we go over into the steel section and we, uh, steel standard, sorry, and we look up our tables. So it is going to be dependent upon really our residual stress pattern. And uh, we're looking for a, uh, a cold form section. It's not a cold form section, so it's cold form section, but a circular hollow section. Um, so whether it's stress relieved or non stress relieved, um, you can see that we have an alpha B equal to uh, negative 0 0.5. So if we go back, we can see alpha B equal negative 0 0.5, and that's just coming from uh, table 6.3.31, and this is a, a CHS cold form, form factor equal to 1.0. All right, so now in order to find our alpha C, um, all we need is are these two numbers, and we can go to table uh, 6.3.3.2, and we can see, well, uh, we've got our alpha N here, and we have our uh, alpha B column here, so we're negative 0 0.5. Well, we need to go, we're going to be somewhere between um, 90 and 95 if our slenderness ratio is 94.4. So we have really um, uh, sort of two options. We could either uh, take the highest slenderness ratio, which is a bit conservative, but it's also kind of the, the lazy way out. So if we're, if we're just doing uh, quick iterations, that's, that's not a bad idea, but let's uh, but the other thing we can do is we can go through and um, we can interpolate between these two values. So let's do that. So coming back to our calculations here, uh, let's just write down what the alpha C are for uh, these different uh, points that we would interpolate between. So alpha C equals 0 0.675, and that's for alpha b equal negative 0 0.5 and lambda equal 90, or lambda n equal 90, alpha c equals 0 0.6384, alpha b negative 0 0.5 and Lambda n equals 95. So and again, we'll just kick right back to the table. Uh, you can see those two values there. So this, these are just our alpha c values um, that we are going to try and interpolate between. So uh, you know the interpolation is really uh, we're just going to do a linear interpolation. So let me just uh, draw over here uh, what we'd be looking at. Um, so you know we'd have a a 90 and a 95, and we'd have uh, a 0 0.638 and a 0 0.675. Um, and, you know, we've got you know, these two values. And we have some value at, um, you know, it's going to be kind of close up here, 94.4. And it will have some value alpha C. 
And so because it's just a, uh, a rise and a run, we can just use similar triangles to find out what this alpha C is for 94.9. So uh, setting up our equations, we would have um, 95 minus 90 over 0 0.638 minus 0 0.675. So that's this big triangle, and then now let's just look at the um, uh, the smaller triangle over here. Um, you know these ratios are the same, just uh, via geometry of similar triangles. Minus 94.4 over 0 0.638 minus alpha c. Uh, we can work all of this out, and we find out that alpha c equals 0 0.6 two. So, I mean, we have a little bit of a bump up from, you know, if we had just assumed a, a lambda of uh, 95, you know, going from, a, you know, 6.38 to 6.42, that's a little bit, you know, but overall, you know, there's not a, not a big difference there. Um, but you know, if we're we're really on the limit, we can we can double check and we can really squeeze that last bit out of our uh, section. So uh, plugging this back into our uh, capacity, we'd have alpha c equals phi alpha c of of n's n's of c equals phi and c uh, n's of s, um, and that's going to equal 0 0.9 times 0 0.642 times our section capacity, uh, which happens to be, if we just uh, come back here, section capacity is uh, 1,700. Oh. In fact, let me just uh, rewrite this here. We know phi ends of s is just uh, 1,710 kilonewtons. So we'll just call that uh, 1710 times 0 0.642. And uh, let's get the old calculator out uh, to see what that is. So we have uh, 1710 times 0 0.642. Uh, we, e we end up with a member moment capacity. Uh, we can just see that of uh, just shy of 1100 kilonewtons. So um, phi and C equals uh, 1097 kilonewtons. And that's it. So I mean, it's, uh, it's not too different from uh, what we did with our uh, our um, examples where we looked at a uh, you know an I type section it's you know much the same um, you know this one's a, a little bit simpler because we have uh, the same we got symmetric sections so we only need to find one R and so everything's going to be really just uh, dependent upon the total unbraced length so uh, again just as a quick recap first thing we want to do when we're finding our member moment capacity is just check out uh, what our section capacity is uh, determine that. Um, and then we look at what our effective length is, uh, what our uh, radius of gyration is about every about each axis which we could uh, we could buckle about. Um, then we work out our slenderness ratio, modified slenderness ratio for that. The highest uh, slenderness ratio is what's going to govern. Um, and then from there, uh, we just need to take that uh, lambda m, that modified slenderness ratio and the alpha b, the uh, sort of residual stress factor, and determine what our slenderness reduction factor is. Uh, just And we can do that just straight out of um, this table here uh, in table 3.3.2. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's, that's all there is to it. It's, uh, it's not too bad. Um, so with that, I'd like to uh, say thanks for watching.